Mirror, mirror on the wall. Show me what I want to see. Tell me what I want to hear. Ooh, is this from Snow's perspective? After we moved to the Looking Glass world, going to the lake became part of my daily schedule. The lake was situated within a primeval forest, with water so clear it reflected the trees upside down like a mirror, almost as though an upside down world was trapped just beneath the surface. And I loved to gaze out at it. If I reached out to it, could I pass through to the other side? I thought about her. I'd had a feeling I would see her again at some point, but I wasn't expecting it to come so soon. The encounter thrilled me. Oh, really? And when we parted ways, it left a hole in my heart. I never imagined she would make me feel this way. I never imagined it would happen so fast. I mean, granted, the original Snow White story is, like, immediate. You know, true love. <laughs> you know, they just kind of, like, hit it off right away. Don't see each other until the end where the kiss happens. And it's like, we're getting married. So I guess that fits in with the story, but dang. But still, some questions remained. She was out walking through the dark forest with a man in a red riding hood who she claimed was her brother, but why? And why was she dressed like that? When our eyes met, her whole face lit up. Was she looking for me specifically? The possibility warmed my heart. Right from the moment I first laid eyes on her, I thought she was utterly adorable. Porcelain skin. A pure white dress, soft, thick, light brown hair, and those red and blue eyes. They sparkled like gems. If my mother saw her, I just know she'd give her a big hug and say, You look like a princess! Oh, so you live in the manor this time. Okay. All right. When I returned to my home in the shadowy forest, I heard a voice calling for me. Snow White? Snow White! Where are you? It was my mother. Evidently, she was looking for me. Okay, so your mom didn't die when you were small. Good to know. I'm right here, mother. As I revealed myself, she let out a sigh of relief. Oh, there you are, madam. We saw you in the intro. All right, all right. A new character has entered the foray. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried about you. Where were you? Aw. She seems nice. But... It's a little bit different from our memories of her, so... She pulled me into a tight hug. I could have just been honest and told her I was at the lake. But instead, what left my lips was an apology. I'm sorry. Deep down, I was scared that she would pull away from me. That she would abandon me. Nothing frightened me more than the thought of infuriating her to the point that she threw me out. You know you're not supposed to go outside. Didn't you promise me you wouldn't? It's dangerous out there. She frowned sadly as she scolded me. My heart ached unbearably at the thought that I'd made my beloved mother worry. I'm sorry. Don't tell me. Did you go by yourself to the lake again? There was a pause, and then she drew her hand to my face. Ugh. Thinking she would hit me, I flinched, but she simply stroked my cheek. You are the cutest, most adorable child in all the land. That's why you mustn't go outside. 
You have to understand, it's for your own good. The world is filled with wicked wolves. A sweet, innocent soul like you will be torn apart in seconds. I know, Mother. Indeed, I knew. I knew exactly how sinful it was to disobey her. So is she your mom or is she your stepmom? Because Snow White had a stepmom. But is this your, like, for real, for real mom? Hmm. All right, all right. Ah, <sighs> Snow White is so dreamy. The next day, while working at the cafe, I sighed like a girl smitten. Which is to say, I was, quite literally, smitten with him. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw my prince's beautiful face. Ah, <sighs> Snow White. Snow White? I snapped back to my senses to find Gretel scowling at me. Gretel, a.k.a. Clingy Brother Number One. I've been trying to figure out, you know, if we're going to do dwarves, like who the dwarves would be. So I feel I feel like Gretel would be grumpy because Cinderella called him Grumpy Gretel. So I, I feel like Gretel would be grumpy. Um, I would guess that Red might be sneezy just because of his nosebleeds. I haven't figured out Kaguya or Cinderella yet, though. If Ryoshi's going to come into this, I feel like he would be Doc. And then, yeah, I don't know about Wolf either, if he's going to show up. I've got, like, a couple that I'm, like, I'm fairly confident. The others, I'm not sure. I don't know who's sleepy, who's dopey, happy. I can't remember the others. <laughs> it's not very good, is it? Anyway, sorry, Gretel. If he knew I was meeting up with my prince, he might try to lock me up inside the house. <laughs> what would ever make you say such a thing? No, I said, uh, donut bites. Donut bites sure are good, aren't they? Donut bites. It felt like a pretty flimsy cover, but fortunately for me, Gretel, the dessert lover, latched onto it immediately. Yes. I completely agree. I love donut bites. Their airy, fluffy texture, their small round shape and golden color, but most of all, that light, elegant sweetness. Donut bites are the perfect dessert that can work with any flavor combination. Truly the baby's breath in the dessert bouquet. I like that, actually, that description. It's pretty good. Only a true connoisseur can appreciate the depth of donut bites. You never cease to amaze me, sister. You think so? As Gretel rambled at me with his eyes sparkling, I struggled to think of a response. I know. I'll make raspberry-filled donut bites for our next dessert. Or maybe custard. Any requests, sister? For dessert? Um, let me think. Honestly, I'm kind of in the mood for snow cones. Snow cones made me think of snow, and snow made me think of Snow White. Then again, I guess it'd be silly to eat snow cones in the winter. I shook my head at myself. You're talking to the boy who eats ice cream. However... I beg to differ. Winter is the perfect season for snow cones. Ice-cold snow cones in a warm, toasty house. The very pinnacle of luxury. I have nothing but respect for you, sister. Your taste is flawless. This only seemed to excite him more. You think so? I do indeed. Evidently, the King of Sweets had a lot to say regarding seasonal desserts. Yes, I've just had an epiphany. Now then, sister. What's up? I've just thought of a new recipe, so I'll need you to leave the kitchen for a while. What? He flashed me his most charming smile. Go on now, hurry. Once it's ready, you'll be the first to taste it. Huh? What? But the cafe! I didn't even have time to come up with a counter-argument before he pushed me bodily from the room. 
don't worry. If anyone orders anything, just give them a dump a cup of rip-off $10 tea over Kaguya's head voucher for their trouble and I'm sure they'll be satisfied. Dump a cup of rip-off $10 tea over Kaguya's head? We are not dumping anything on Kaguya's head, thank you very much. I knew that tea was a rip-off! But he ignored me and shut the door in my face. Ah, <sighs> good grief. I let out a big melodramatic sigh and slumped my shoulders. The demon of sweets was just as passionate about making sweets as he was about eating them. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but he had this one little quirk. He refused to let anyone watch him make them. At one point, the rest of the family debated whether he was lacing them with drugs. But they still tasted amazing, so we decided not to worry about it. As long as the police don't come and investigate, it's fine. I see you're working hard. Just then, I made eye contact with Red as he returned from his shopping trip. Welcome home. The kitchen's off limits at the moment. I know. He set his wicker basket on the floor. Did you need something? He squinted at me dubiously as I stared at him. Hey, big brother? No. I didn't even ask yet! I pouted. I already know what you're going to say. You want me to escort you into the woods so you can meet with your prince, correct? Actually, I was going to ask if I could go by myself this time. Absolutely not! He glared at me sharply. How many times must I tell you? The forest is dangerous at night! What if something happened to you? Okay, then, will you come with me? W well He stumbled over his words. My point is, the answer is no, and that's final. How come? Well... You came with me last time, didn't you? Sensing an opening, I started to press him. Mm. He pursed his lips and fell silent. And unless I was seeing things, he was looking a little pale. I mean, he just barely survived his encounter with that ghost. Can't we just swing by? No, we cannot. Even just for a few minutes? Not even for a few minutes. Fine. At this, Red smiled in relief. Thank you for understanding. You're a good girl. Oh yeah? Then where's my head, Pat? With an innocent grin, I spread my arms wide and awaited my reward. Whenever Kaguya called me a good girl, he always stroked my hair until I melted. Yeah. Not happening. I clucked my tongue in frustration. You're no fun, Red. <laughs> that being said, fine was not the same thing as I promise I won't go. Sorry, Red. I know you're worried about me, but I'm not going to get my Prince Charming if I just sit around at home like a good girl. And so that night I, sn I snuck out to the forest. Oh! After nearly an hour of searching, I found a lone figure sitting on the lake pier. Now then. Internally, I was overjoyed to have found him again, but I decided to play it cool and keep my composure. Good evening! Just then, he started to lean toward the lake. No! Huh? Don't do it, Prince! I dashed over to him, seized him by the scruff of the neck, and hauled him back up. Ah! The, mom the momentum sent me tumbling backwards onto my rear, but I didn't care. Sure, winter had only just set in, but the weather was still cold, especially at night. Jumping into the lake was practically a death sentence. That's true, I didn't actually consider that the l couple of times we've been in the lake. <laughs> like at the end of Red's route, and at the end of Kaguya's. Like, oh yeah, it's freezing. Ow, 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 ow! Oh god, are you okay? <clears throat> my prince lay on his back near my feet. Almost like an impromptu lap pillow scene. Hallelujah! 
I mean, you're choking me by the collar, but other than that... Oh, I'm sorry! Hastily, I relinquished my grip. Mm. Newly freed, he rose to his feet. Are you hurt? As he spoke, he offered me his hand. N no I'm okay. I took it, and was startled to find it ice cold. Not only that, but he was much stronger than I was expecting him to be, given his scrawny arms. Thank you. Apparently, he was more masculine than I thought. My heart fluttered. Uh, wait, what am I doing? I was so busy reveling in my own personal shoujo manga, I nearly forgot the main issue here. It's not safe to swim in the lake at night. Who are you referring to? You, obviously. He averted his gaze and sighed. Ugh, dude, I wasn't gonna. I was just looking at the water. Well, sorry about that, dude. What? I'll show you. Whoa! He dragged me by the hand to the edge of the pier. Together we peered down. See? I was looking at the world in the reflection. The moonlight was bright tonight, illuminating our silhouettes in the rippling water. Oh, I see. In other words, I had jumped to conclusions. Well, it's definitely pretty! I attempted to gloss over my mistake. In the water, for a fleeting moment, I saw a hint of grief in his expression. Is something wrong? I sat up and looked at him. Not really. He answered without looking at me. I am... I'm a little curious, because Snow said that they moved to the Looking Glass world. Like, not just... It's not like an area. It's a, it's a world. So what world did he move from? And did he lose his mom where he was from, but on the reverse side, she's still alive? And she's... kinder? I don't know. I'm wondering about that. He answered without looking at me. Had I upset him? Listen, um... I'm sorry for hassling you over this misunderstanding. If I had angered him, then he deserved an apology. It's fine. You didn't know any better. Oh, Prince Charming! Touched, I nearly leapt into his arms, but managed to stop myself. Anyway, we meet again, it seems. His thick eyelashes fluttered as he spoke. Man, girl loves his eyelashes. Yep, I beamed. Gosh, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, I'm... I'm happy to see you too. In the moonlight, his eyes glittered. While he did seem happy, he also seemed sort of sad. But why? Do you live around here? Huh? Oh, yeah, totally! I live with my four brothers at a cafe downtown. Four brothers, huh? His tone seemed to imply something. So, no one else? What about your parents? No, they don't live with us. Our family's a bit of a special case. See, my parents are both hunters. Whenever they're not traveling for work, they live in a house in the big city. They don't really come out to see us much. You must be rich. Upper middle class, I'd say. But that money has given us a lot of freedom. It's a privilege, and I'm grateful for it. I see. What about you, Prince? Where do you live? In a little cottage in the woods. So you must live nearby! That's true, too. He mentioned a cottage, but he's obviously living in, like, the mansion. Now, like, in a mansion now. That's another kind of flip. The conversation ended abruptly. Just when we were finally getting the ball rolling, he grabbed it and tossed it in the trash. Uh, hello? I peered at him curiously. Your family must love you a whole lot. What? 
Your brothers, I mean. Otherwise, they wouldn't go out of their way to supervise you like this. Oh no, I've been followed. His gaze seemed to peer straight through me, or more accurately, straight over my shoulder into the distance. Huh? <laughs> oh, I wonder where he could be. Looking over my shoulder, I spotted a sliver of red fabric peeking out from behind a tree. There was no doubt in my mind. It was red. I'll be right back, okay? Sure thing. With my prince's blessing, I strode over to where my brother was hiding. <clears throat> and then... Brother dearest... Pacing a smile onto my face, I called out to him in a low tone. It was my, what pray tell do you think you're doing, voice. Y Eureka, I can explain. Uh... Crouched low against the tree, he looked up at me and began to panic. I started to feel guilty, like I was bullying him. I'm not mad at you. I knew you were tailing me. I continued in my usual tone of voice. What? You did? <laughs> sure, it was dark out, but it was hard not to hear someone following you when they were trampling on dead leaves. You followed me because you were worried for my safety, right? I appreciate it. Even in the dim moonlight, I could see his face flush red. N no I wasn't. Oh, Red, you're the cutest brother in the whole world. Gretel inexplicably gets a stab of pain in his chest. So, wanna come with me? Smiling, I held out my hand. What? I mean, we already know you're here. You don't need to hide anymore. I... I'm sorry, but... I can't. Because of reasons. The blood drained from his face, and he shook his head vigorously. Can't what? Uh... Can't be around my prince? At this, he nodded. I'm sorry, but he terrifies me in a way I can't possibly explain. I don't want to go anywhere near him. Is it because he threw that book at you? <laughs> he pursed his lips together. Evidently, the book attack was something of a traumatic event for him. Honestly, I couldn't really blame him, but... It's okay, Red. He's not a wolf, and he's not going to bite. Now let's go! I grabbed him by the arm. Go! No screaming! I know I'm a girl, but I'm still your sister! Due to his gynophobia, Red was deeply uncomfortable with any physical contact from women. That's why he won't give me head pats. Sorry I took so long. Dragging Red by the arm, I saluted to my prince with my free hand. No! As soon as the two of them made eye contact, Red shrieked and hid behind me. Oh, come on, man. Sorry about this. Arisa. Yes? What is it? Let's hold hands. Whoa! Sure thing! I grasped his hand with both of mine. Your hands are warm. And yours is nice and cold. <laughs> Red. <laughs> Just screaming into the night. Ugh. Sexual misconduct! Get away! But Snow White ignored my brother's paranoid screaming. <laughs> he ain't even here. Hey, so... Will you come back here again tomorrow night? Not hap- I absolutely 100% will! Rain or shine, come hell or high water, I'll be there! I shouted to drown out whatever my brother was trying to say. Cool. See you tomorrow, then. Cool, cool. With an air of perfect composure, he let go of my hand and spun on his heel. Okay! See you tomorrow! 
and so my prince disappeared into the dark forest. As for me, I waved eagerly until he was out of sight. <laughs> and then... Oh, uh, sorry, Red. What were you going to say? Once we were alone, I checked in with him. Nothing. He pouted and looked away. <laughs> sorry, Red. Not gonna make this easy for you. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Show me what I want to see. Tell me what I want to hear. I loved to read. My favorite books were literary works about people and events, be they real or imagined. In other words, I loved stories of all kinds. They say truth is stranger than fiction, but I didn't consider real life to be especially superior. Sure, it offered choices that books didn't, but books featured a narrowly constructed world that could handle the most outlandish of plot twists far more consistently than reality. That's true. Regardless of the outcome, I could shrug it off and say, that's just how the story goes. Thus, no matter what sort of emotional impact a book left on me at the end, it never truly mattered in the long run. Like a still lake, I would always regain my composure. Dang, I wish I could say the same for myself, but nope. There's stories that still stick with me to this day. And that emotional distance could make any tragedy beautiful. That day, I was rereading an old book for the upteenth time. I hadn't gotten my hands on anything new recently. Most of the stories in here were incomplete. The readers were waiting on these authors to continue their work, yet the rate of publication had taken a nosedive. To be more precise, they hadn't released a new volume in months. How many times had I read this story? Or this one? No new stories for months. Well, if it's based off of memories, then... They're, you know, let's let's say, for instance, Yurika's in a coma, and this is her dream. If she's been in a coma for months, or she just hasn't read, like, a certain story, or any books after she went into the coma, those stories will not exist in the world. That makes sense. That's interesting. As much as I liked them, the more I read and reread them, the more I started to memorize all the details. Sitting on the floor, I grabbed a different book. Old, weathered volumes were scattered around everywhere. Some were my favorites, while others I didn't care for. If I had to reread something, I wanted it to be something I liked. Unfortunately, the one I grabbed turned out to be one of the boring ones. Mm. With a sigh, I slumped down onto my side. But just then, there was a knock at the door. I sat back up. Was he finally here? Come in. With my permission, the door opened. I lowered my gaze to the books to avoid making eye contact. Not like I didn't already know who it was. His shoes entered the corner of my vision. Well, hello, brother. Hey there, Snow White. Welcome back, Huntsman. I closed my book and greeted him. With his ash-gray hair and icy blue eyes. I found him flawlessly beautiful. Well, dang. For the record, though, his name was actually Ryoshi. That's why I like to call him Huntsman. It was a reference to his name's alternate meaning in Japanese. Here's another book I finished. As he spoke, he pulled a book from his bag. In my excitement, my voice rose up several more octaves than it normally would have. Oh, thank you. I already finished the books you brought last time, so I was really bored. I took the book and looked down at the cover. The ultimate crossword omnibus from beginner to master. Oh, it's another stupid puzzle book. Have I ever mentioned what terrible taste you have? Try reading something fun for a change. 
Just like that, my excitement was snuffed out in an instant. He brought me a puzzle book last time around, too. I quickly deemed it boring. Of all the sad and depressing hobbies to have, he chose crossword puzzles. What a waste of flawless good looks. Puzzles were games, not books. Still fun, sure, but they weren't literature. And what I wanted above all else was a story. I kept trying to explain this to him, but he didn't seem to get it. Then instead of waiting for me to finish mine, how about you pick something out yourself? I don't mind buying it for you. It saves me the trouble of having to choose and read it. Meh, it doesn't matter. I don't feel the need to read any one particular book. Then quit complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just giving you my opinion. I tilted my head at him and he scowled. Hmm. We really need to do something about your lack of filter. Otherwise, you're going to cause problems. According to him, I had a caustic attitude. Personally, I thought caustic meant you were actively trying to hurt people. Surely I couldn't be caustic then, since I had no ill intent. And another thing. Clean your damn room. Don't leave yourself lying around everywhere. There's hardly any floor space left to walk. As he glanced around, he launched into another of his annoying lectures. Honestly, he was making a big deal out of nothing. All he really needed to do was kick stuff out of the way. All that matters to me is that I know where everything is. If it bothers you so much, why don't you tidy it up? He clucked his tongue and actually started to pick up the books. Only the most incurable busybody would go to all the trouble of cleaning someone else's room. And yet I found I couldn't quite bring myself to dislike him. Now that he had found a task for himself, there was nothing left for me to do but crack open my new book and start reading. Sure, it was a puzzle book with no story whatsoever, but it was still a book and therefore I still wanted to read whatever text was in it. That was my personal policy. Huntsman? After a few minutes, I called out to Ryoshi. Yeah, what is it? His tone was one of annoyance as he continued tidying up the books. How many years has it been since you and I first met? He paused to think for a moment. At least six, I think. It all started at the lake, right? Yeah, that's right. I found you standing around on the lake shore in the middle of the night and struck up a conversation. Lately, I've been going there to hang out with this one girl. Oh yeah? What's she like? She's an oddball. She seems ditzy at first glance, but she has hidden depths to her. You can never tell what she's thinking. If I were to describe her with a single color, it would be white. So she's pure and untainted. Yeah. She's as innocent as the driven snow, untouched by corruption. She can be dyed in any color or bleach any stain. Hers is a color unlike any other. Interesting. She does sound like snow. This was my initial impression of her, right from the moment we first met. 